Hi everyone, welcome back to the show with me, your host, Lou Burrows. And in this episode, I'm going to share my holistic approach to health and the principles that I follow and use as a guide when navigating health, especially with all the confusing health information out there. So this episode, guys, is a solo episode. I haven't done one of these for a little while now. I think my last one was on blue light, but here we are again doing another solo episode. But rest assured, we will we'll get back to guest episodes in the next episode. But let's focus on this episode for now, as I will be sharing my holistic approach to health, which is a combination, right? It's a combination of, of everything that I have learned, studied, searched um, over the last probably 18 months to two years. So 18 months, two years ago, um, I was just getting started um, in my health journey. Or I was just getting started in my health journey. Ultimately, although that's a little bit of a lie, I probably started a little bit before that with, with running, right? So I took up running um, as, as a great way to help my mental health, actually. And that was way, way back like probably over nine years ago but I would say that 18 months two years ago is when I became more some would say especially in my family more obsessed with health and over that period I've really dove into the the science of health but also going back to ancient cultures ancient wisdom and kind of seeing what I can learn from our ancestors right about health because if you compare and there in a way there there is no comparison because like our ancestors and us live in very very different times but if you look at what they were doing and like how how can we can apply their wisdom in the modern world i think that is like the wisest approach i guess that we can use to navigate the modern times and especially with the rise of chronic disease and all of the toxins around us and whether it's environmental pollute uh, environmental um issues environmental toxins like there's so much and like when you're getting into the, the health space i guess let's call it that it can be difficult to navigate so what I'm about to share with you today is my approach to, to health, and it's very much a, a holistic approach. That's how I approach health. I believe that health is life. Life is health. It's a holistic approach, not a one and done. It's a journey. It's a lifestyle. And so, yeah, I'm going to be sharing that with you today. But before that, though, this episode is brought to you by Riverside. Riverside is an online studio platform designed to record, edit, and share high-quality podcasts built for growth from day one. Powered by AI, you can record in 4K video or from your phone and automatically remove filler words such as ums, as, you knows, and many other speech patterns. Built for human conversations, Riverside makes it super easy to start a podcast that sounds great. Ready, ready to start your podcast and share your message with the world? Check out the link in the show note description to learn more about Riverside and get a 15%, yes, that's a 15% discount off a paid subscription. Now, let's dive into today's episode where I'm going to be sharing my holistic approach to health. My approach to health starts with the number one thing that when I've been researching health, comes up time and time again, you know, courses I've done, programs I've done, books I've read, uh, conversations I've had here on the podcast. The number one thing that is a theme that comes up a lot is the importance of our breath when it comes to our health, right? And this from a kind of, the word I want to use is drawn out perspective, right? So when you aren't health conscious, I guess, when you are navigating daily life, you know, and you're not researching kind of all this stuff, really into your health, etc. cetera. Um, and even within some health spaces, you know, you have like the gym bro side, you have gym culture. I think our breath overall from society, from that kind of drawn out perspective, all within certain sectors in terms of gym culture don't really understand the importance our breath has on our overall health right but our breath is actually our health okay so our breath is um amazing because it can change our f physiology um there's also some research and study studies that show that it can change its biology and i think when people think of breath and then relate it to breath work the number one thing that they come to mind is Wim Hof. You know, Wim Hof is uh, the leader kind of in breath work. There are other thousands, right? Millions probably of other different experts kind of within the domain of breath work, many of which we've, some of which we've featured here on the podcast. You know, breath work as a topic comes up time and time again on the podcast. I've shared Soma Breath with you uh, a lot of times when we actually interviewed the founder of Soma Breath, uh, Niraj, who is actually close friends with Wim Hof. And through the Soma Breath protocol, protocol method and community, that's how I practice breath work. And I actually discovered Soma Breath 
through their Breathwork for Life program on the Mind Valley platform. And this was my exposure to the importance that our breath has, right? So this was the first time that I really discovered and come across, you know, this importance. And the rate that we breathe, how we breathe affects our physiology, but it also affects our mental state and basically how we show up in the world, right? So when we're stressed and angry, we breathe very, very differently to when we're calm and relaxed, right? So just think about that. So when we are in that more stressed space, we can actually come out of feeling stressed and being stressed and acting like the person or behaving like the person who is stressed by, in that moment, regaining consciousness, no, not consciousness, but like becoming conscious of kind of the situation and how we're breathing and regulating our breathing, you know, slowing it down. And so this gives us an immense power to navigate life, right? To navigate all of the challenges of life. And this is what, like one of the reasons I love, um, I love the breath, right? I love this this kind of understanding and the power that it can give us, right? It can empower us to to navigate life because we have control of this thing that we do subconsciously. But by bringing conscious by bringing consciousness to it, ultimately, we can change our mental state, our emotional state, our physiology, and you know maybe even our biology over time, become ultimately like the person we want to become. Like, who wants to be a stressed out, angry, you know, person most of the time? No, like for me, I want to become a calm, composed person most of the time that, that navigates life with that calmness and that composedness if that's even a word and be able to approach situations you know difficult situations and while we're all human and sometimes we are gonna kind of fall out of that conscious reckoning and react in certain moments realizing that actually we have the power here to change it by changing our breath and that is the reason why i love 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 breath work and just becoming conscious of the phenomenon which is our breath which we do subconsciously right it's like we do subconsciously, but it's in our control, it's in our power. So my number one tip here is to start to become more conscious on how you're breathing, in which situations, and how that leads to the mental and physical state that you're in and your, your physiology when you are in those states and like how that relates to how you're breathing in that specific moment in time. And you'll be, for me, it was really interesting to to start to to notice the, the common trends and that. And I'm still on this journey, right? Like I, as I just shared beforehand, that health is um that health is a journey and so you know it's it's not a, a, a one and done and um i'm not always perfect with this like far from it but then even with that like when i catch myself in the moment like oh no i reacted and didn't respond there it's like oh that's because i didn't have conscious control of my breath and there is this relationship between consciousness and from you know or, or becoming conscious becoming more conscious becoming more awake becoming more aware and and our breath you know so there is this kind of relationship that, I, I, that i've seen and, and kind of experienced right that when i become conscious on how i'm breathing then i'm able to bring in that um awareness and change it right and slow it down uh, but also speed it up sometimes maybe sometimes i, I want to speed it up to be able to perform right you know like if i'm breathing really really slowly like i'm coming down into parasympathetic nervous system right and so I'm more calm and composed, as I said beforehand. But if I'm about to go into maybe a workout or, or do something that, that I need energy, I need um, I need power and I, and, and I need, need my breath to be a little bit more elevated to help me to perform, then we can also use the breath. I don't want to use the manipulate, but kind of manipulate the breath to, to give us that energy to go and perform. So our breath is so, so powerful. And also one other thing, I will say on this one final thing I will share on this because I've got a lot to get through is the thing with health as well. Like we talk about sleep and nutrition, and we're going to come on to those. But like, what's the number one thing that we can't go without for a very very short piece of time? You know, like it's not food. Like food, we can go weeks without food. It's not water even. Like people do water fast all the time in there. You know, and, and they make it through. It might not be comfortable. Like fasting it isn't comfortable. But like, what's the number one thing that we cannot live without? It's oxygen, right? Like it's the ability to, to breathe. You know, we can go what, like three minutes tops, three, five minutes tops without being able to, to breathe. I was like, soon enough, we're going to die, right? You know, so like food, we can go weeks. Water, we can go probably days. Sleep is also probably, you know, like days, maybe even a couple of nights before we start to notice the effects of sleep or not having sleep. And just actually there's research to share that just after one night of not getting quality sleep, you know, it affects us, but we'll come on to that in a moment. And so our breath really is is the foundation of life, right? It's the foundation of 
uh, me being here, you being there, you listening to this is like our ability to be able to breathe because it's the thing that we do every single, like probably like mini, every single probably, probably like nanosecond, right? And, and so we cannot live without it. And so it's the foundation of our health. That's what I found. Anyway, um, within my holistic health model, I call the breath part being able to breathe deeply. Okay. So being able to regulate our breathing, to change our mental, emotional, and physiology, mental, emotional state that is, and our physiology, and to be able to, to breathe deeply um, not, and kind of move away from shallow breathing and um, i could talk about the breath for, for a very long time and there's lots of different breathwork techniques and method methodologies out there my number one for you to get started if you haven't really been aware of and how you're breathing and in what situations was what i said beforehand which was to um when you're in a stressful situation next time start to check in with yourself and your breath and how you are breathing and you know if it's a stressful situation or a situation that makes you angry frustrated just start to breathe a little bit more deeply and slowly and regulate your breathing so that's breathe deeply which is the pillar for me when we talk about health up next we have sleep peacefully in my holistic health model so sleep peacefully is kind of what it says on the tin being able to go to bed every night and wake up in the morning and having and and, and, and have had a peaceful night's sleep you know when you we have disrupted sleep when we have sleep that's you know just not at the quote unquote, one for one of a better word, level that we want to be sleeping at, we feel it the next day. Now, we might not recognize it consciously, like it's something I've been thinking about and, you know, trying to understand that actually, why, some, why, why sometimes am I in like maybe a, a good mood and then like some other times I'm not. And it's like, actually, how did I sleep the night before? You know, when we start to ask these questions, we can start to join the dots. And most times that when we even even a little bit like substandard sleep, it affects us the next day in ways that we aren't even conscious of. And so this is why sleep is this kind of second pillar within my model, because it's so, so important for rest, for, for recovery, especially if you do a lot of physical activity and exercise. And we'll talk about exercise and moving it in, in the moment. I know it's a big difference when I don't get quality sleep against, you know, surpass sleep right and so sleep peacefully is this second part of the puzzle okay now with sleep um there's a few different things here now again i'm not a sleep expert we've had a couple on the podcast so so far but uh what i focus on and my kind of principles within the sleep banner is to as the evening goes on um to start to wind down have like a wind down have a have, have a wind down routine ready for sleep you know so a lot of people talk about morning routines and i do actually have a morning routine as well but i also have a sleep quote unquote sleep routine or a wind down routine right which starts by me actually putting on my blue light blockers now there's some research out there that suggests that blue light block blockers are so important some research that suggests that that's probably not the case we've again we've covered that on the podcast and we'll continue to explore this for me i go by a very simple kind of logical principle i think here in in terms of like well when it's dark outside this is the time for us to go to sleep and when it's light this is the time for us to be awake right kind of makes sense so when we are in winter as we are now and we have in in, you know a lot of light on indoors especially bright lights it makes sense that to our biology that that is going to represent kind of like outdoor light you know and light in general right and like our biology doesn't really know the difference between and it makes sense between you know the, the light that is now shining on, on me if you're watching this on youtube and really like sunlight right like it's, it's light and some uh someone might say oh yeah I might be wrong there, but it, from a logical point of view, like light is light is um, light is light. I'm not saying that not I'm not saying that light all light is the same either, because you obviously have the light spectrum, and you have like things like infrared light, which is really good for many different factors when it comes to recovery and everything. And we've spoken about that on the podcast as well a few episodes ago. But yeah, for me, I when I try and simplify health, I just just kind of get myself into this place of like, well if it's dark outside and then our bodies are from a natural perspective preparing for sleep and we have all these indoor lights on it's going to in a way confuse right and disrupt we spoke about 
circadian disruption with Daniel White on a previous podcast, right? And so it, that makes sense to me you know, from a, just a logical perspective. Again, I'm not in the depth of like all the science behind that, like all the little nuances and mechanisms behind that. So this, you know, and, I and I'll kind of reiterate that this, this model is, is kind of like a combination of little bits that I've picked up here and there, like my own logic. And, and I think some people call it like bro science, right? I just like me put, putting the pieces of the puzzle together to try and navigate health and life in the healthiest way possible. So bringing it back, when it comes to sleep, um, I look it through through that kind of lens. And so at night, I put on my blue light blockers because that's going to help to block blue, you know, help me to block blue light, but light in general. Now with blue light blockers, I got my first pair probably 18 months before I started diving into health you know, yeah, dive, diving into health and exploring health and become really passionate about it like I am. And what I was doing then was still a lot of content and working on laptop until probably a little, well, much later than what I do now. So now with my wind down routine, I try to detach from work and content creation and everything and really don't go on the laptop after 8, 8.30, sometimes maybe 9 latest, right? Definitely not after 9 p.m. And then I have that hour wind down routine from 9 to 10 p.m. At the time of recording this, like years ago, as I said, that 18 months before I started diving into health, I was working on the laptop, you know, ed editing videos, etc. probably still at like 9.30, 10. And I was doing it in, in my room um, and I had the lights off, right? So the it was the light, it was just me on my laptop, you know, no uh, other lights on. I just like being in the dark for some reason. But the screen... I felt it like affect my eyes. And so I had a friend who started it um, or somebody that I connected with who had a kind of side business selling in blue light blockers. Now, I'm not sure if these were regulated in any way or if they were just some kind of like cheap hair on, you know, kind of that they, they this company put together. But I, I did buy them to support him and I put them on and I started to notice a difference before I then researched it more. And it was like through noticing that difference that sparked me into researching this a lot more. And then I discovered all of the science behind blue lights and, you know, blue light as a type of light and blue light blockers and kind of really entered this world, right? And then as time went on, you know, you discovered people like Andrew Herberman, et cetera, who talk about this and you're like, oh, wow, right? But my first exposure to this was my own experience of supporting a friend or, you know, a colleague through uh, business and supporting him, wearing them, noticing a difference because I was, again, sat in my room editing videos, the light on the screen was affecting me, I put these blue light blockers on and I noticed a difference. Because it was late at night, I then noticed a difference between the nights that I wore them with sleep and the nights that I didn't. Now, again, there could be many other different factors. But with that, with my experience and then later on or the science and then just trying to think about sleep in a logical perspective. And if at night it's meant to be dark, we got loads of lights on. I need to make my environment as dark as possible. Right. So one way I can do that is to remove devices from a certain time, introduce a wind down routine, put on blue light blockers because we do live in the modern world. We do have lights. And now over again, at the time of recording this, I'm starting to make changes because I'm researching more and more and discovering companies that actually offer uh, lights for your, for your, for your home that don't have blue blue light that aren't powered by blue light there's a few companies like block blue light .com, i think it is i'll link it down below and discovering red light to use more to use more what's the word i'm looking for like calmer type of lights right so now um before i go, I go to bed the most common form of light that i use is red salt lamps because the light isn't as bright as overhead lights right and so these subtle changes can make a difference so Anyway, that's a long way to saying that when it comes to sleep, light, very important. It's a lot of that to do with uh, circadian biology and circadian rhythms. I would highly recommend you research that because it's very, very important. And we have covered it here on the podcast. And circadian rhythms is important for not just the sleep aspect, but for all areas of our health, right? From the times that we eat to um, bodily functions and systems, let's call them. Um, and that's been something that I've become more conscious of more recently some other key points on sleep so a lot of research out there around how long from what i understand quality is more important than quantity but quantity also does matter so 
A sleep cycle is about 90 minutes, okay? And we go through, and it's recommended that we go through about five sleep cycles. So when I learned this, I was like, okay, a minimum of five, five sleep cycles, they're roughly each about 90 minutes. A couple of them, we can get into the nuances, but again, I'm not an expert on this. You have like REM sleep, deep sleep, um, and lighter stages of sleep as, as well. It's kind of within these cycles. But from a very simple perspective, sleep is important. And so we want to um, focus on quality first and then quantity. And so as I shared, some things we can do is have that wind down routine that I feel has made a big difference. And then look at our sleep cycles and go, okay, so well, what I did was five sleep cycles, 90 minutes. That's actually roughly seven hours, 30 minutes. Now, I would say like seven hours, 30 minutes is probably the average, if you look at all the data, that people recommend like some people say like you must get like not you know like eight hours right like that was the the golden number but then some say well i'm actually better on six and say five some say seven and then i'm just like okay putting this all together if you if we're quote unquote meant to get five sleep cycles and each sleep cycle is 90 minutes that comes out at seven and a half so let's just kind of focus there right focus on seven and seven and seven and a half and that's what i've been doing and it's worked quite well for me Interestingly, also with sleep is I'm better, I feel like I get better quality sleep when I wake up naturally, so no alarm clock. I did buy a kind of like a, a, a light, I guess you would call it like a light alarm clock, so it doesn't wake up by noise, it wakes you up by light because it um, reminded, or it kind of it reminded me more of like sunlight. And again, the light isn't like bright LEDs, you know, it's very, this kind of much more calmer light as it would be when the sun rises, right? I even notice a difference with that, like when that comes on to just like completely waking up, like naturally with, with, with not that, and obviously without an, an, an alarm. And I haven't used an alarm now for probably, time of recording this, like two years or something, right? So I, I wake up naturally or I use this uh, clock, it does actually have a clock and then and again, it like kind of represents the sunlight i guess um to, to wake you up naturally over i think like a 30 minute period so it gets kind of lighter and like the sunrise would but even if i don't use that and just completely wake up naturally i feel that's better for me after testing it i feel like i've got better sleep um compared to not so a few different extra extra bits there so a few extra bits there that i've found to be interesting kind of within my own sleep journey and sleep health hygiene I'm probably missing a ton, but when it comes to sleep, again, I just think it through the lens of like quality over quantity, but quantity also does matter. Light, you know, we want to get rid of light because it tricks our, bio it tricks our biology and having that wind down routine of de-stressing, journaling, reading, meditating. Sometimes I have a hot bath or shower that really helps. Actually, one thing I integrated um, probably a few years ago at the time of recording this, chamomile tea. When I improve your sleep, chamomile tea. But most recently, chamomile tea with a spoonful of honey, thanks to a recent episode I I done with Paula Cannell, and that seems to be the magic trick. So um, don't really take supplements for sleep. I know there's magnesium and everything that I'm gonna see. The thing with with, with supplements, just a quick anecdote here is that I tend to supplement when I notice that I need the supplement, if that makes sense. So like if, apart from two, that I'll probably come on to on the eat section, apart from for, from two, but mostly with supplements, I supplement when I feel like I'm low in something. Or it's like seasonally. So like in winter, I take a bit more vitamin C, vitamin D, because less sunlight, more colds and flus, etc. So anyway, spent a long time on sleep. Let's move on to eat nutritiously. I think this one is quite straightforward, but what I want to say is like what we eat powers us, right? It gives us energy. It gives us life. It makes the cells, you know, of, of what we're made of basically, right? So the food that we eat matters and I've changed my, I hate the word diet. Well, I changed my diet over the last probably two, three years and it's made a huge difference to anxiety, depression, et cetera, et cetera. Not that I would like go to McDonald's every day beforehand, but, you know, there was things that I would eat on a consistent basis. And then, like, no wonder I felt the way I did. And so, obviously, food matters. Um, it's the third area that I that, that, that I look through health, that I look at health through. After our breath, after sleep, then comes food. Because it powers us, um, it gives us energy, or it can give us energy, right? Or it can take our energy away. And so, one of the foods that mostly give us energy is going to be whole foods. My principle here is 
Whole Foods first, right? Whole Foods. I mean, you have this thing online where it's like the 80-20 rule. To be honest, like, I don't even follow the 80-20 rule really. For me, it's like every single day for every single meal, I'm going to eat like prioritize Whole Foods, right? Then like on my birthday, for example, or at Christmas or on my brother's birthday or on a family birthday for dessert one day, there might be a slice of cake. Like I'm going to probably that depending what's in it because as i've spoken about on the podcast as well like we can upgrade the quality of our foods i was i do have some kind of like just no goes in terms of food so like no fast food restaurants at all no seed oils at all and people are going to say back you back this up with science etc but just but just because there's like that debate around it it's like because there's, a, there's that debate around it and this is seed oils there must be like some evidence to say that they're quote unquote, and I don't like labeling things good or bad. So not optimal for human health, right? And so it, even if they're not as bad as people are saying, there's still that question mark. So I just rather not have them, right? So don't go near those sodas, etc. Sugary drinks, no. Really like palatable ultra ultra processed foods, no. Do I hate some? What you would consider processed foods, yes, because like, for example, tomato passata, right? It's a processed food, right? But it's got one ingredient, with it, which is tomatoes. So like, I'm going to eat that even though it's processed. So we also have that debate kind of within health. But overall, whole foods, like just live on whole foods, right? Um, then I think the second pillar to this is quality matters. So like the quality of your whole foods matter. So for example, an apple that's been sprayed with pesticides compared to an apple that hasn't, right? The quality of, of the apple matters and kind of the other components to the foods that we're eating, like what it's been sprayed with or, you know, organic, not organic. So like overall quality therefore is the second pillar it does matter. I and mean, if you can't focus on quality, but just focus on whole foods, then I personally, I think just focus on whole foods. Then we move into like the personalized section. So nutrition and actually health for me is a personalized uh, journey, right? So there's a lot of science actually coming out that backs this up in terms of gene testing, gut health testing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a few companies. There's one company I love. I'm not associated with them in any way called Viome. I really want to get a Viome gut health test, uh, but they're quite pricey. Um, anyway, but you know, so it's on my goals list. Anyway, so they look at you also. So you take a gut health test, and uh, through that, they say the better foods that are best for you as an individual and those that aren't. So that's quite advanced and not everyone I think can get to that level at least straight away when they're starting a health journey so to simplify that I'm just like okay so whole foods first quality of uh well then quality so like organic over non-organic it would be an example an example would be grass-fed beef or, or meat versus I don't know there was some research and kind of uh study that, that suggests that that said you know and kind of I think it was a little bit of a exposure that there was farmers and stuff that were feeding their cattle like sweets and stuff. But anyway, I'm just gonna pop that to one side. But anyway, like grass fed meat, etc., over like corn or anything else that they're fed. Then we come into like the personalized section. And I'm actually gonna say like personalized as and seasonal, kind of see that as kind of one because I'm like I'm still undecided in like what's most important there, like the personalized approach or the seasonal approach. So the personalized approach approaches the foods that are good for you. So for example, you might be, you know, a banana, for example. Whole food, right? But like the banana might spike your blood sugar more than it spikes my blood sugar. It might affect your gut in a different way than it affects my gut. Although it will, it will. There's no mind about it. It's gonna 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 affect you your gut different than my gut and your blood sugar compared to my blood blood sugar. So you can also get these blood sugar monitors that can also help us with the personalization effect of foods um, on us as individuals. So that alongside seasonal, I think is like the more quote unquote advanced, maybe seasonal over personalized because seasonal is probably more easier to do than personalized. So eat seasonally is just eating with the seasons, right? Like what's available in season. And at the, the time recording this, we are in November. So we're kind of autumn going into early winter months uh, and so what's a seasonal food well, we just had ha halloween what's most associated with halloween it's pumpkin right so that's a seasonal food for this time of year so guess what i was on the pumpkin this year right <laughs> pumpkin soup etc because it was a, a seasonal food and what i've realized is actually when you eat food seasonally or as close to their season their natural seasons as possible which is hard to do because you go into the supermarket you kind of ship all the food over it's from spain or wherever so it's not like seasonal to actually the country as well which is what i'm also you know so seasonal to where you 
your physical environment, right? It actually tastes better as well. And so it tastes better and it's better for our health as well, you know? Yeah, whole foods, quality, I'm going to go seasonal and then look at a more personalized um, approach, which I think is more of a long-term goal and something to aim towards. So we have breathe deeply, sleep peacefully, eat nutritiously. And so, so there I shared my tips on that. Then we have move frequently. So move frequently is all about moving our bodies because our bodies are designed to move. You can move in whatever way you want. I do not care. I do not care if you prefer yoga, if you prefer strength training, if you prefer cardio, if you prefer taking a hike every day, if you prefer walking around your block, you know, 30 minutes, four times a day, right? When we're getting started and through this holistic health model, it's just about moving your body, moving your body in whatever way feels good for you. Now, sure, every, let's call it quote unquote, type of movement is important. For example, like cardiovascular health, muscle strength, you know, mobility, flexibility, all important. And I've created a, a cohesive and integrated routine, exercise routine that puts all these pieces together you know so like one day it'd be more kind of hip focus next day more strength focus next day more kind of the vascular focus like long distance so is your zone two etc etc so we can really go into the weeds when it comes to physical movement and exercise but when looking at health realistic approach it's just about moving your body in whatever way feels good for you and then over time from my own experience you start to become curious about other ways right so i started with running because it was really helped my mental state and then like 18 months later, I'm like, oh, realized the importance of strength training. And was like, I'm going to need to look, look into this. Then discovered more, uh, well, then also discovered yoga around the same time. Then discovered more uh, about like, kind of like mobility, flexibility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Stretching is, is all is really important. I think it's an undervalued one as well. So our bodies are designed to move. So when we're talking about health from a, from a holistic perspective, it's about moving your body. And my number one tip here is to move your body in a way that feels good for you, in a way that is more natural to you when you're getting started. So for me, as I said, when I first got started, it was running. I think that's because I had quite a big history of like playing sports. Um, and so it was like running, kind of, kind of vascular health was like my go-to thing. And then over time, I've integrated more, you know, uh, flexibility ability strength training which i've started to it started to grow more and more in me especially over the last six months which is uh which is interesting but you often see me walking around uh taking short 20 minutes 10 minutes 30 minutes 45 minute breaks where i'm walking around kind of where i live um i also go for an hour-long walk a day as well so walking is so underrated right so underrated and so just start by walking that's kind of my number one tip for like friends and family right like you don't have to do what i do just walk you know just walk and move your body it's so so important to what it means to be human and uh yeah this holistic health model then we have think consciously right so think consciously is understanding or, or it takes into consideration that we aren't just our, our body we are so so we are, we are a body and we are also a spirit and so that's a little bit connected to like the breathe deeply because when we're able to connect with our breath our, our breath is also like the gateway to our spirit or i also believe right and so um also a, another category i'll come on come on to later but it's kind of that association that i've made with it um but we're also like we're not necessarily our mind but we have a mind right we have a brain we, we have a mind and so um our mind can be used for amazing things right it can be used for creation it can be used to bring things into the world it can be used for ideas and you know just making our experience here so much more fruitful, right? But our, our mind and the, our thoughts are actually can also be used for the opposite of that. And it can be used in more negative ways. Let's just put it as that, to be honest. So really, like, the choice is up to us if we choose to think consciously and then for live consciously or not. And being a master of our mind and of our thoughts or allowing them to master us, right? And really... Again, this is this is this in itself is a journey. We don't get taught this, so we need to kind of learn this most times through like our own down moments, let's call them, or like failures, or just like yeah, just like our own more bad experiences. Like no one gives us a manual on like how to operate our mind or how to operate the brain, which would be helpful at times. So what I've learned here is the importance of being able to think 
consciously to navigate life and to improve our mental health, right? Now, a lot of the physical side, a lot of the physical elements, sleep and our breathing and our eating and what we're eating affects our mental health. So there's this symbiotic connection between physical health and mental health, but also with more on the mental health side is if the quality of our thoughts and not associating with our thoughts, not believing that our thoughts are us and not falling into, into that trap. Um, and just realizing that our thoughts are like the passing clouds of the mind, right? We can take conscious control over them when we're able to, you know, and therefore think consciously. And in each moment as we're navigating life, be a reactor or a, what I call a responder. And when we respond, we are coming into this kind of place of thinking consciously. My biggest tip here really is to not judge yourself for when you do fall into the kind of the reacting state because we all do it like even i still fall into that state like quite often and i think i think like it's about reducing the the time between you realizing oh i fell into this space and then being able to do something about it and then going back to this this is where some of the areas start to cross over going back to our breath and actually bringing more consciousness to our breath so then we're more aware of the thoughts and kind of the present moment including the thoughts that we're having disassociating from them and being able to think new thoughts the thoughts that we actually want to think and move on with our day so think consciously is for me a part of our health because it's part of our kind of our psyche our mental health etc and ultimately being able to consciously think um and thinking the thoughts that you want to think that are in it that are, are in alignment with who you are and who you want to be in the life that you want to create this category or this area i think consciously also takes into consideration like how you're navigating life and so what i mean by that is like the actions that you take and how they affect your life and other people around you short term and long term so for example linking this with food you know it'd be like going in let's just say you end up in a fast food restaurant right and you're like when you then step into think consciously you're like actually what am i doing here because this doesn't resonate with the area for my health and so you, you know would leave right so when we're able to think consciously, we're able, therefore, to make choices and decisions. And that might be a bad example, so do forgive me. But we're able to make choices and decisions that are more in alignment with the person that we want to be, or truly are, but and like the vision that we have for our life, ultimately. And so thinking consciously is about the seamless thoughts we have going on in our minds that is linked with our mental health and like improving those over time and not associating with them, not attaching to them, uh, which I think is a lot, which is where a lot of the suffering does come from. And then secondly, understanding like how, as we're navigating the world, how do you, how do we affect the world, right? How do we, our actions, decisions, choices affect not just the path that we're on, but also the, how do I, how do those decisions affect the world around us and our friends, family, coworkers, et cetera, and being able to navigate that with this kind of idea of thinking consciously and you know, moving through life consciously. So hopefully that makes sense. So next up, we have our relationships, right? So in this relationship category, I've kind of split this down into two, which is to connect openly and love deeply. So we are social beings, right? Like even if you're an introvert like me, we need some sort of social connection, even though sometimes I just want to like go to the top of a mountain, right? Like on some level, we need some sort of social connections with social animals, creatures, etc. So this is the, probably the, the weakest area for me because of that fact, because you know I'm quite comfortable on my own. I don't feel I need social connection, although sometimes it's like, actually when I, then I do have social connection, I feel better than if I was just to stay on my own. Kind of a weird thing that I've realized about myself. Maybe that's because I'm more introverted. So we need relationships, right? And for here, I think one of the really important tips is to connect openly with people, be open with people, especially the people, the close people around, like love them deeply, like life is so short. There was a few episodes recently that really got me thinking about like the fragileness of life and was like, shit, like it can be taken away with, it can be taken away from us like, you know, like that, like clicking my fingers, right? Like so quickly, um, so, you know, so quickly. And that's just made me kind of come more into this frequency of love and gratitude and appreciation for life itself uh, but also the people around me and uh, yeah so that's kind of my ex more one of my most recent experiences here what i would share here also around connecting openly though is to manage your energy like, i think like a lot of the other categories are also important because they either give us energy or take our energy away but especially in the social relationship category i've been around people beforehand that my energy of just is just when i've been around them you know it's just um now i am an overly sensitive person and also an introvert right so like my energy in social settings plummets right but that you know they just take so much and you leave the environment and you're like 
so drained, right? So we don't want those environments. We want environments that give us energy, that lift us up, that help us be our best selves most of the time and to live in these environments most of the time. So when I'm talking about environments and our relationships, I kind of see them as intertwined, like our home environment, people we spend time with at home, links with relationships, our work environment, the people we spend time with in the workplace, right? So relationships and environment, have this symbiotic relationship. And funnily enough, when it does come to environment as well, we want to, especially our home environments, maybe our work environments, design them the it will design them in a way that resonates with us, that uh, who like demonstrates like who we are. And so for example, if you want a more calmer environment that happens like because that's gonna help you be your best self, like maybe you would get some salt rock lamps, right? Maybe some candles or something. So we really want to design our, our, our environment. And then when it comes to our relationship, again, I don't want to give too much tips or advice here because it's one of the weak one of the weakest categories um within this kind of holistic health model that i've noticed for my own life and we all have one or two or maybe even three that are kind of like our weakest that we need to work on the most and relationships is that for me um and probably environment kind of to yeah kind of change up my environment but definitely relationships so I think the main thing I would share here is about the energy piece, as I mentioned beforehand, and ensuring that the people that you are around most of the time, you know, like sometimes you're going to be around someone that is just maybe a nag or something, right? And just drain your energy in that social situation. I don't know, you go to a cousin's birthday, right? Can't control that. But most of your environments, you know, most of your relationships are the ones that give you energy, that give you life, that lift you up. And hopefully you're that for someone else as well. Then finally, we have, we have serve purposely. So serve purposely is all about our service and our contribution to the world. And I like to link this one in with mostly our career, but obviously like we can serve outside of our career and the work environment and kind of that social setting. So kind of focus on, focus, we'll focus on that in a second. But just operating or navigating life being, again, kind of links with relationship, right? You're this open person, you're giving, you're sharing. I mean, even if you are an introvert like me, like you're just, this is where we also I feel like we come more into our spirit more. You know, our spirit is, is I kind of feel like our spirit is, is, is part of it that's expressive, right? That is loving and kind and sharing, right? Like, yeah, and just kind of thrives on that energy, right? And so stepping into that version of you you know, and sharing and giving, etc. So there is a little bit of a caveat or, or more of an awareness to have around that piece as well. Of like sometimes people might take too much from you and like you notice that it, therefore your energy drains. And so it's, this is also about energy management, right? Like, which is why a lot of the other quote unquote categories are kind of like listed in some sort of priority in order, like our breath and our sleep and our nutrition, because these are the things that give us the most energy when we optimize them and when we really focus in on them, it can give us the energy, the life, et cetera, to then go out into the world and be the, our best selves and our most caring selves and most conscious selves and live from this more centered space of our spirit, right? Because we have the energy to do so. You know, we've slept, so we're not, we slept peacefully, so we're not a groggy person when we wake up in the morning. So we're more our best self to be radiant, to share, to, to feel into the abundance and gratitude and appreciation, right? And share that with others in a free and open and purposeful way. Uh, now, in, in relating to that in terms of purposeful way, like, again, purpose is something that I've... I would say it's probably again an kind of a weak area for me. Like I've always wanted to like find my life purpose, right, without knowing what that is. So it's 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 been an inter interesting journey. What I would say here is like the model. And this is probably more of a model for um, our career when we're kind of looking for purpose and meaning is to focus on or to find the thing or discover within yourself the thing that lifts you up the most, that you love to do the most, and that you can share with the world that the world also finds valuable in some way where both so like the world the people around you if it's in a business setting I've got my business hat on or in, in your career like the the end consumer of that or whatever it is they're like there's value there so like they're willing to kind of pay for that you're willing to get paid for that right so you're open to that energy and that vibration um so what I'm trying to say here is like within a financial model that works for everyone that you're also good at, right? So like, you know, there are these different components. I feel like when it comes to our career, when we're talking about purpose, find purpose and meaning in our career, the thing that we like to do that lifts us up, the thing that we're good at, right? The thing that we can get paid for 
in a financial model that works for everyone, right? So it works for us, but it works for the people that, uh, let's just say it's a service or something. You're an author, a writer, content creator, right? It works in, in a way that people are willing to pay for that. So there's like that value exchange. So I think when we're trying to find purpose and meaning, especially women in our careers, that's a model that I found that I'm still navigating through, but it sits quite well with me. And purpose is part of our health because it links for me into the spirit kind of element. And um, I've also like why we're here. So we're, we're just going to be here and be like super healthy, super jacked. Maybe if we go hit in the gym, but we're not contributing and serving. So a huge part of like what it means to be human is this contribution and service piece. And that's in our careers, but that's also in life itself, right? As we're going about navigating life. Um, again, a little bit of a weak area for me, especially on my, more the career side. Um, but that's kind of what I found and I found it to be a huge part of health. You know, there were some studies that were done around, around this in terms of like the people that said that they had like, purpose and meaning in their lives, like lived longer than those that didn't, even if they were doing the, the walking, you know, the health, the health eating, etc. Also links with relationships, right? Because you go to like blue zone countries and they have this kind of really strong social community, social, so social twice a setting and purpose and meaning. And so that I think is something that's underplayed within health and it's part of my holistic health model. One final thing I'll share here is that one question that I've um, found to help navigate in life, trying to find purpose and meaning is like the question of how can I help? And probably more so within like outside of actually career, like let's say I'm in a family environment and or a friend's environment and something happens or someone seems upset and I'm like hmm, how can I help right and the good thing about that is like how can I help based on what I have to give right now in this moment you know so let's just say somebody lives like the other side of the country and you feel really bad that you're unable to get to them like in a way think consciously come back in, into your breathing realize that you can't get to them right away but maybe the thing that you can do right now in this kind of service piece is jump on FaceTime with them or on the phone with them etc so um, I think that kind of links up to the piece I was talking about in terms of like this idea of when we are full and when we have energy, like then we can give to others, but we can also give what we can give at a specific moment in time. You know, like don't focus on what you can't do or what you can't give, focus on what you can do and how you can contribute and how you can help. And in different times, in different moments, that's going to vary depending on how you are, right? How your mental state is, how your physical state is maybe, how you generally feel in your energy level. So that's my holistic health model. We have breathe deeply, sleep peacefully, eat nutritiously, move frequently, think consciously, connect openly, love deeply, and serve purposefully. So that's how I, at least uh, that's my intention for navigating life, my holistic health model. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode today. Before we go, I would just like to mention Real Superfoods. Real Superfoods is on a mission to make superfoods more accessible, and affordable to everyone without compromising quality. I personally love their Magic Matcha, their Coco Dream, and their Superfood Energy Bars, which power me through the day when I need that extra little boost. You can get any one of these products or any of their other products by going to their website. The link is in the show note description below. And if you use code RC20, you can get a 20% discount off your first order. That's RC20 to get 20% off your first order when you go to Real Superfoods. And I would highly recommend that you do so because these superfoods are packed with that nutrition and at an affordable price as well. So again, that's RC20 for a 20% discount off your first purchase. What are you taking away from this episode and what positive changes are you going to make as a result? Please do leave a comment or a review wherever you watch or listen to your podcasts, whether that's on YouTube or on Spotify or over on Apple Podcasts or yeah, wherever else you get your podcasts from. I read every comment and review and appreciate you being here. Appreciate you tuning in. This episode's a little bit different. It's a solo episode, uh, but hopefully you gain some value in that in what I've shared and I would love to hear what value you have gained and what potential positive changes you're going to make in your life as a result. Again, I look forward uh, to bringing the next episode to you really, really soon. So I will see you then.